Okay, hello. Okay, just trying to sync the audio with the video. It's kind of hard, but um, there's a little delay. So I just want to make a quick update to the last video that I made regarding the the pre-order for my script for Target specifically because in the last video I had the script look for the pre-order button on the page and refresh until it finds it then click it then stop at the login screen well I've done a lot of changes to that. It It's not the best. I learned more about the process after I did the programming. Uh, turns out Target is a bit different in their website. So I've uploaded my current changes to this do target dot text. It's found on my Git. Um, I was actually able to get a pre-order today, and this really helped. So I'll try to go over. So in this video, it's not as well structured as the last video. I don't have a demonstration. All I have is boring code. I actually had to do that video like three or four times, and I don't want to do that this time. So... Um, it turns out there is, so what, what we want to do is click that pre-order button to get it inside of your, your cart, but your cart has a section called saved for later. So... It turns out that, yeah, that's, you just have to somehow, what I was able to do was open my phone mobile browser and the pre-order button was shown and I just tapped it enough to where it eventually asked me to log in. Either that or I was already logged in, but eventually tapping the pre-order button eventually got it to my account. Now, I know that might be difficult, but I mean, automation here could do that. Like I could write it to do that step, but it's not written. I, the updates I made to this were assuming that some, that I, that this will be used with an account that already has it in the cart. So I'm just gonna go over the code. There's a lot more lines. Um, I put a little comment saying basically, this is the version dated today that I was updating between yesterday and today and then probably the day before, but basically saying what I just did. I was using the add a cart. Sorry. I, I, uh, Try not to speak too fast. But I was using this automation to spam the add to cart from the save to later. What happened was I ended up clicking go to checkout, entering the rest to complete the checkout manually. This automation is set up to do the checkout automation, such as credit card or entering new billing, entering new shipping, or entering the credit card, or entering security. There's there's variations depending on how your account is set up, which is also important, such as it's faster for this checkout process to go through if you have an account with pre-saved billing and pre-saved shipping, so that all you have to do in that checkout screen is either enter your credit card and security or just your security, then press complete. So 
At the very least, it's two steps. Enter security, click complete, which is fast. And it explains why the target stock uh, immediately vanishes once it appears. Because the target stock apparently is fluctuating. It's getting added very few throughout the day randomly. Apparently when an order is canceled based on someone's credit card not having enough balance because Target's doing a lot of checks for your balance, so you got to have enough balance until the actual charge goes through. Uh, that's the rumor going around anyway. But if I could get to the code, I just kind of want to talk it out, and I don't really have a script. I'm just going to go over it. So I have these globally. So actually, some people, um, I helped like three, at least three different people, and they're not used to scripting. It's like that this public class has to match your file name, your class name. Now, I was able to get this project in a jar file, so you don't need to install NetBeans. You just need to install Java, so you run the jar, then Chrome driver, and the sound is included. I was actually able to get someone running that without getting NetBeans set up. And I was actually able to help someone else get NetBeans set up. And I'm trying to help people, because I got... I got one, I got mine, I'm good, I don't need it anymore, but I enjoy this programming scripting, so I may update. So, got the web driver globally, web driver weight globally, web driver short weight. This short weight, I have um, four seconds compared to the 10 seconds. I have this short weight, you'll see down below for the, when you add the uh, add the cart from save for later. Uh, I used a short wait to check for the unavailable. So like you click add the cart, oh item unavailable. Okay, you got four seconds that'll look for. It. The reason why it's so short is because if it's not there, we're gonna get through this down below later. If it's not if the item unavailable is not there, you quickly want to go to the next step to get us check out as fast as possible. So let's get to... So yeah, this is your class. And then you got a main. You need a, a main. Inside the main, you uh, make the class. Do target, do target. And this is the initialized function first called when the class is made. And now this line... Uh, I have it in jar format in the project, but uh, basically this is Chrome driver. You got to download Chrome driver, which is the launcher for Chrome and the Chrome and Chrome driver have to launch. I mean, they have to match the same versions right now. It's like version 85, 86. So you, that has to be configured if you're running this by yourself and that beans. So uh, I made a change. It just goes to target.com and then it, it does uh, a sleep for 15 seconds because we want the user to log in. As soon as it's launched, you log in manually and it sleeps and then the automation will kick in because I did I added a new parameter, skip step, so when it's, uh, see, I commented out the original starting at step zero. Step zero would be getting the pre-order button, adding it to the cart. But in this instance, we're skipping step seven. And I had these uh, new parameters. If step, you know, making sure it only runs the correct step. If you start at the beginning or if you start at that step, it should be a less than there like this one is but um so here this is what the update starts step seven it's the user already logged in and it's now um 
looking for the add the cart button in the save the later section save for later section so it clicks it and we're skipping i'm sorry one second okay yeah i got confused because i disabled the old step eight uh because this was the shipping like pickup or delivery which is you can't pick it up right now so you don't need that step but um this is uh, important this is what i worked on today it took me several tries so you see uh, the printing item available and printing item unavailable so this step eight um it looks for the error you know like you click add the cart it was item item unavailable so this is um, using the short wait. So this is like, this could go very fast. Like it, before the page even fully loads, it detects that message and it freaking reloads. Like I was able to get this fast. Like, but I don't think the speed is 100% necessary. I think the if it shows up depends on the target i mean i know people could fast check out but still i think i think 30 seconds would be okay like anywhere like i'm talking total down below refreshing the page but uh because i put a page refresh right here and i i did a new uh boolean right here this is tricky because you have to say um, is unavailable true. Otherwise, there's some logic behind it. I forget the details, but this is necessary because down in the try catch, I'll get to it down below. But um, okay, so it looks for the uh, unavailable error. This is what helped me get mine. Like 6 p.m. today, Target launched a uh, like a limited amount of physical and. This is what got me past the hard part of from add to cart. No, I'm sorry. From save later to add the cart to the checkout. So, um, yeah. So it's, if error is displayed, unavailable true, refresh, throw exception, skip the step and go all the way down. Otherwise, if it can't find the error, it's going to throw an exception, but this time the unavailable is true. Because the unavailable is true, it's going to go back to this and skip step nine. It's a bit genius, isn't it? Isn't it? Like it, it realizes it's, it's not there. So it throws an exception, skips here, goes down, then it comes back up and comes back here. Now, that could be the problem why I didn't get this working 100% automation because uh, as soon as I saw the automation, I was just watching it and I saw the checkout, I manually took over because the programming, I changed the design where if it fails, it freezes. So that way it allows me to take over without worrying about the page to refresh on me. Because if that page refreshed on me when I was in mid checkout, I would have lost it. So. Um, sorry. So the rest of these steps, sorry, I'm trying to adjust the mic. The rest of these steps, 9, 10, 11, 12, through 21, 22, they're a bit, um, they're disabled. Like you can enable disable based on what you need. Like we could look at what they are. Um, so after step nine is the checkout button. So it's after you successfully get it in your cart, the delivery option is checked, your quantities set, you hit the go to the checkout. Uh, I disabled this because I added these steps here, first name, address, zip code, because th this is for an account that does not have saved information. And if you have to do all this, that You've already lost. By the time you get any of this in, your your PlayStation 5 is already gone. So we want this not to 
be automated. So uh, I was trying to write some skip steps here, like, oh, because I was having some, there was a couple times where I got to the actual checkout and I lost the PlayStation within a day. So like Target, you got to be on lookout for Target, expect them to randomly drop. But on this right here, uh, I tried to write this where like, okay, if the credit card is shown, do it. Otherwise, throw an exception, then come back and skip and try the security. But it's a bit tricky because if you get the if you get the credit card, then you got to enter the credit card, click verify. So that's two extra steps. So the way to get um, security saved is like you have to go. No, I mean get to get your uh, credit card saved in your account. Is you got like you don't have to purchase something. Like I see people saying you have to purchase an item, but you have to get an item all the way to the very end of the checkout and get all your information saved, your credit card, verify, and then just don't press the complete button. Just go back. And then that should have your information good. But like, I don't know because it, sometimes I had it shift between verifying the credit card and the pin or just the pin. You want it just the pin because uh, yeah, if you want, you could enable, I disable this. You can enable this step to do the pin. So like this could all be adjusted, like enable, disable. Then like if it fails here, get it to start somewhere, go into the loop. Like I have it set specifically where if it, I'll show you down later. I have it specifically like if you fail on eight and unavailable, then go to seven. Otherwise, if you fail on eight and is available, go to nine. So like you got all this weird logic going on. So credit card, yeah, where was I down here? Verify. So yeah, what's interesting also is another step is removed if you just enter security. If you enter just the security, you don't need to enter a verify. All you need to do is click complete. Whereas if you have to do the credit card, you need to click verify then that. So like it really removes a lot of steps just having just the uh, pin. So yeah, after that, this is uh, a this is what happens is like step by step by step. And if one step fails, it goes down to the bottom. And then the bottom, some of them tell them go back up to the top at a certain step. And that's why I made this uh, is done global also, because sometimes like if that's local, it's only going to be locally called. Like you have to have it global and the very bottom is done true. But OK, now let's get to the, the try catch. So. This is what happens when the step above fails. It stops up here and it goes down here. And uh, so it says failed at a step. And this is for the audio file. Uh, Boolean loop false. This means, I think, uh, does mean it means go to another loop. No, actually, sorry. Loop means going uh, for the audio file if you want it to loop, so it's the alarm, so it's continuous. Uh, the do audio, it's based on this step, do you want to play audio? If you couldn't find no pre-order, play the no pre-order, or if you know cert you want the human user to be notified, whatever. So if your step less than four, we're not worried about that, but this plays the no pre-order button sound. Uh, we're, sk we're skipping the step seven, at least I did. So step eight is the unavailable error. And uh, I have a variable sleep length, which is 10, which is the delay that'll sleep, then refresh the page. In this instance, I have it as 10. See, I, I don't want to DOS, DDoS. I don't want to, I feel weird having it too fast. Like I could have it like, couple seconds, five seconds delay, and it loads perfectly fine. But I don't think it improves the chances. As, 
better than 30 seconds. But I could be wrong. It may, maybe it does, but I just don't like dosing. So, like when I had it at 30 seconds, I was still able to get in twice within a short span. Like it's target, but I could be wrong. So, do what you want. That's why it's a setting. Um. So, step eight: if it fails at the unavailable, sleep for 10 seconds and then play the. Uh, alarm i guess but i don't want to play audio i don't want it. the reason why i put this because it's error is if you don't have anything in it i guess because i didn't um initialize it but i didn't declare it there so that's my bad java uh step greater than nine so this is if you got it from save for later to the cart and the checkout buttons there but it failed um i don't know why i actually had this occur and it made me miss one um, PS5. But you know, it's okay. It's, it's part of the process. You miss one, you come back, where did it fail? You adjust it. And uh, so if it's at step nine, complete checkout fails, I don't want any delay. But I also don't want it to reload because that would be bad. I mean, I would bet it'd be, it would be better to start the loop over at a certain step, but in this instance, I told it to just stop and then do the audio so that I could come in, which is exactly what happened and how I got the PS5 because the automation just stopped and they took over. But it could be rewritten to go back up at this step. Actually, I have to look down. It might actually be, but I could see is done true, which is global. You have to bear in mind, this is all primitive writing. It's all just written, you know, on the fly. So it's easy to forget. Um, so otherwise, if it fails any other step, it plays the alarm because it's like, it's not, it's on the order screen, basically, if it fails anywhere else, I think. I forget. But no, what happens if it's on seven? Yeah, you know, I just know that seven, eight, the steps where it goes from save or later, the cart works. But I had to manually take over at step nine. But it could be adjusted. So this is if do audio is true, step is an eight, because I don't want any sound to play at eight, which is unavailable. Uh, I'd have debugging print. <laughs> Something happened that got me confused. Um, I hate all these try catches for these sounds, but let's skip that. So it does the sleep sleep length catches exception from that length for the audio. So we're skipping this. We're not doing that. This is pre-order button. So this I spent a lot time on, also. Um, specifically, if you're step 8 <laughs> or step 20, it, precisely step 8, the most important step, is that adding to cart or the error unavailable checking. So I do a temp step, temp step equal 8, which is a current step. If it's 8, throw, if it's unavailable, then temp step minus one, you're going to go backwards in the next, you're going to go to the add card button. And then you're going to reset the variable. Uh, otherwise, if it is not unavailable, or if it is available, it's going to go to the next step after it's so it's going to go for the go to checkout button. Um, skip that. And it's going to print item available and it's in a debug print failed at step eight retrying at step seven or nine and uh, it's going to call it the function above at the step temp step so if you're still following along it's basically just more updates to the previous script uh, I learned quite a lot and Maybe I could update or help people. Um, 
it'd be nice to have this fully automated, like the whole complete, and then putting whatever information is necessary. But, you know, I don't really have the need to uh, use this myself because um, I'm just going to wait till the pre-order arrives. Um, got any questions, just talk on Discord or comment. But I kind of doubt anyone's still here this long, so um, thanks.